Hello and welcome to another episode of Vedic Astrology with Renu. A man with no motive is a man no one suspects. Always keep your enemies confused. If they don't know who you are and what you want, they can't predict your next move. In most myths and stories, Mercury is usually portrayed by a character like Peter Baelish in the Game of Thrones, a person who is a shapeshifter, intelligent but slippery. He is one who blurs the lines between ally and enemy. He may start out as the ally to the hero, but his agenda is usually to stay on the winning side, so he may betray or help the hero at a critical moment. Every planet but Mercury has a unique and a pretty fixed lens through which they see the world. A well-disposed Mercury sees no black and white situations, only gray shades that need to be navigated. He's neither judge nor jury and simply has agreed standards of qualitative and quantitative measurements. Most people in the West know Mercury from the notorious Mercury retrograde cycles. A retrograde planet is one that appears to be moving backwards rather than forward, and all planets do that. Mercury just goes retrograde more frequently. During retrograde cycles, the energy of the planet gets introverted. Since Mercury's job is to manage the day-to-day -day affairs of our life, the overrated fear of Mercury retrograde becomes a cultural phenomenon. In astrology, Mercury is associated with learning, education, commerce, mathematics, and details like contracts or balancing a checkbook that make life smooth for us. Mercury is also the mental machinery of a scientist or even a philosopher who measures, dissects, weighs and experiments to understand the laws of nature. In Western mythology, Mercury is called the messenger of the gods. While all the planets build us up, our consciousness speaks through Mercury. All mental pattern recognition and repetitive mental behaviors are also the preview of Mercury. A highly skilled Mercury is fond of puns, double meanings, metaphors and poetry. Mercury loves anticipating and mediating the riddles and uncertainties of life. The word merchant derives from the root word Mercury. Mercury functions as an excellent participant in the world of business, trade and commerce. The Arthashastra or the ancient Indian treatise in economic policy dating back at least three millennia is dedicated to the planet Mercury. In 2015, the Human Connectome Project, funded by the U.S. National Institutes of Health, studied the neural pathways of the brain, called connectomes, that govern the communication of signals from one part of the brain to another. Their research showed that people with better language skills, vocabulary, education, and even income tended to have significantly greater connectivity between the regions of the brain associated with higher cognition. This could be a glimpse of Mercury's role in our consciousness. Mercury loves connections and loves variety. So our Mercury brain is on an endless search to take in more and more data from the environment. To understand Mercury's curious, malleable and neutral nature, we turn to the Vedic mythology of Mercury's birth. Jupiter, the cosmic guru, was preoccupied with spirituality, theology, mystical codes and rituals of the Vedas at his ashram. His students were the gods, kings, celestial beings, as well as learned mortals. His wife Tara, which means stars, was frustrated because her husband had little time for emotional connections and enjoying the pleasures of day-to-day -day life with her. So when she met one of her husband's students, the moon, who had a passion for relating and connecting at the level of the body and mind, she was smitten with him. They had a notorious affair and she eventually eloped with him. This was quite a shock for the great Guru Jupiter and knocked him off his feet as well as a big scandal in the celestial social circles. 
After much strife and interference from other gods, Tara finally returned to Jupiter, but she was already pregnant. By the way, Tara, like all the partners or consorts of the Hindu gods and goddesses in Vedic mythology, represents their other half. Tara's running away with the moon shows that even when we have all the access to spiritual knowledge of our unity consciousness like Jupiter, it does not mean that we are still not vulnerable to the temptations and persuasions of our moon mind. So Mercury had two fathers, Jupiter who raised him and his biological father, the moon. The three distinct parts of our mind in Ayurveda psychology are represented by the two fathers and their son in this way. Our moon will sense or have a feeling about someone or something. We can of course never totally rely on our feelings, as they can be subjective, but we thrive and suffer as a result of this connectedness with our loved ones. Our Jupiter can go beyond the moon and actually experience others within himself, like many empaths. He can merge the object with the subject. It's totally impractical to have this type of consciousness, but we thrive and suffer due to this connectedness with the whole universe. But their progeny, Mercury, systematically navigates the world through facts, figures, logic, categorizing and dissecting. So he loses the interconnectedness of all beings, ecosystems and the mind. In ancient cultures like the Tao in China, Shinto in Japan, Vakantanka of the Native Americans, or Yoga of India, Jupiter qualities were celebrated and sought after in leaders and mentors. In the modern information age, you need to have a good Mercury to navigate life, lead and be considered a wise sage. So back to our story. Mercury's mother Tara never openly acknowledged who the real father was, and Mercury grew up confused not knowing if he belonged to the moon or to Jupiter. He also had a great deal of resentment towards the real father, the moon, who he felt had abandoned him. When reading a horoscope, Mercury does not perform well when placed with the moon or in the water signs of Cancer, ruled by the moon, and the sign of Pisces ruled by Jupiter. The feeling and empathetic nature of water blurs the details and neutrality of Mercury, clouding his judgment. It's a little bit like trying to communicate when you're overwhelmed with feelings or crying. The fire signs of Aries, Leo and Sagittarius give Mercury great acumen and further increase his intelligence. But sometimes the impatience of the fire element makes Mercury's job a little harder, like trying to communicate when you're excited. Mercury is best placed in the air signs and the earth signs. In the air signs of Gemini, Libra, and Aquarius, he's free to move around, learn, communicate, and explore. In the earth signs of Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn, he can put his ability to manage life to good use in the practical world. So back to our story. Mercury grows up a talkative child and is described as speaking even when he was in the womb. Since Mercury had no firm convictions, beliefs, agendas or pedigree, even as a child he was always questioning and extremely inquisitive as he wanted to understand and learn everything. He would ask his mother, what am I supposed to be? Am I a man or a woman? What is my lineage? Do I believe this or that? What is my purpose? Should I become a mystic? Should I get married? Should I be a merchant? Should I this? Should I that? Lord Brahma gave Mercury the name Buddha from Sanskrit root word buddhi, which means the intellect and the discriminating reasoning logical, conceptual part of our mind. The Buddha was born as Siddhartha and was given the name Buddha the same as Mercury. But how does Mercury, the noisiest planet in our headspace, 
who won't stop dissecting, analyzing, and talking, even when we go to meditate or to sleep, have anything in common with the Buddha, who is associated with stillness, serenity, detachment, and meditation. In myths and stories, Mercury rarely gets to be the hero, as his character exists to take the greatest advantage of the situation in his favor. The Buddha is an exception. He did not become the hero by winning some great battle or making some noble sacrifice. The Buddha contemplated, dissected, and step by step calculated the predicament of our life. So the Buddha directed his intellect inwards and discovered that the permanent freedom from suffering was not outside but within the heart and the mind, which is the greatest advantage one can gain through a highly evolved Mercury. The Buddha merged the skills of Mercury with Jupiter's cosmic intelligence and the moon's purified, not subjective, emotions uniting Mercury with both his fathers. Every planet has an agenda. Sun leadership, Saturn commitment, Jupiter ethics, moon happiness, Venus harmony, Mars courage, but Mercury's agenda, as we have seen, shifts around to his advantage. Perhaps at the end of the day, the only planet that may be truly capable of authentically reflecting on our biases is Mercury, as he can witness our actions with clarity and without an agenda. Although Mercury looks neutral and uncommitted on the surface, when his skills are turned inwards like the Buddha, he has his unique superpower to approach a situation without bias and observe our true motivations. After all, he is the child of cosmic intelligence and emotional intelligence.